Hello, every folks, and welcome to the Saturn version of Tactics Ogre, this time played in sweet, understandable English. Um, all right, so what exactly are we looking at? What does it change? What's new? And how exactly can you play this uh, on different devices? So, first and foremost, uh, what does it add? Well, the one that everyone kind of knows this one for is going to be the voice acting. Uh, so basically, just a lot of the more major cutscenes will have voice acting in there for most of the characters. The generics, for example, don't speak, but, like, the Zenobians usually do. It's, uh, it's gonna vary on the cutscene. Like, for example, uh, Canopus is not gonna speak in this cutscene, but he would have in the previous one. You know, it's a little bit selective. Obviously, there's a lot of lines, and not every one of the entries in the series went as crazy as Reborn did with the voice acting. Um, but, anyway... Just so you know, that is a thing. Now, other changes. Uh, this one uh, happens to have a hard mode uh, that increases levels by uh, 10%. Um, additionally, you may notice that the camera is a bit more zoomed out, so you get to see more of what's going on. There's less overall stutter in the actual gameplay department. Um, and additionally, I feel like there's some different item placements. So, like, across the board, between all the different ports, generally speaking, um, it seemed like you got to, uh, you got a lot more kind of quality of life stuff coming out of the PS1 ports. Um, but you definitely got a lot more of the sort of presentation stuff coming out of the Saturn ports. Uh, so, for example, like the Ogre Battle Saturn port was extremely colorful and uh, it made units turn around to face each other, even though that wasn't a mechanic until OB64. Um, but uh, at the same time, the PS1 version had added a whole bunch of tooltips. Bear in mind that the, while these versions are all trying to improve on the SNES version, they are still going about it in completely different ways. These were completely different teams. So just kind of so you're aware, it's not going to be one-to-one. -one. All of them have different features for different reasons. Um, so, like, for example, in this one, uh, some of the tooltips are a little bit more expanded. Some of the wordings are a little bit different. Um, and the translation patch, in this case, uh, is going to be uh, giving you the uh, PSP translation uh, rather than the PS1 translation. It's like the PS1 translation uh, that gets applied to the SNES game a lot of the time um, is going to be... I, I say a lot of the time as if there's any other time. Anyway, <laughs> so like the, 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 uh, the PS1 version uh, was very blunt. Uh, this one is, again, the slightly more kind of colorful but still human enough uh, that you get in the PSP version. So it just it sounds good. Um, but it also sounds a bit more, you know, dramatic and fancy and all of that kind of thing. So I like it. But either way, uh, every version is going to be a little bit different. Now, um, in terms of the translation, again, this seems to have been a fantastic job so far. Um, I haven't seen anything that's really notably sticking out um, on the emulation side of things, aside from some portraits being a little bit off. Um, this particular emulation solution that I found here was working pretty solidly. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room here, which is the fact that this is a Saturn game. Namely, this is going to get complicated. Um, the Saturn has always been a bit of a bear to actually get running, and thankfully, while stuff has come a hell of a long way, um, the overall complications at least have answers. So, personally, I ran into a lot of complications because I replaced my computer with a Steam Deck, uh, which, again, seems like a little bit of an odd choice, but you'd be shocked how much laptops cost these days, and surprisingly, this has actually been a very functional decision. Um, okay, so... Let's uh, let's cover a couple things here. Um, so, how do you actually want to handle this on the emulation side? Well, if you're on PC, um, basically you're just going to want to go get Beetle. Uh, that's going to be uh, running through um, uh, running through RetroArch, ideally. Um, RetroArch, RetroArch, whatever you want to call it. I find RetroArch easier to say, so that's what we're going to be going with. Um, so basically what we're going to be looking at here is uh, you want to run uh, run this through RetroArch. Uh, you want to just get Beetle set up as you usually do. It'll ask you for BIOS files. I'm not going to bother asking where you got them from because realistically not all of us have, you know, a million dollars laying around to buy the magic, uh, you know, Sega machine from like decades ago at this point. Um, I have no idea where you'd even find one for anything less than a kidney. But... Um, in terms of the emulation side of things, for that one, you really just need some BIOS files. You chuck them into wherever you, uh, wherever they want them. Usually that's going to be in the actual system folder uh, uh, for uh, RetroArch or RetroArch, whatever. And you're pretty much good to go. You just launch it and it should launch just fine. Should have all your controller configurations all set up. If you're on a Steam Deck, however, keep on listening. And or if you're on Linux to some degree, because uh, it's going to take a couple more steps. See... I originally had, for previous videos, had gotten it running on uh, Yabos, and 
other times I'd gotten running on Beetle. They all had issues, but they mostly ran. Uh, this time around was slightly different, because, again, Steam Deck, it's still a PC, but it's Linux. Um, issue was that uh, Yabos wouldn't work. Uh, Yabos, Kronos, and uh, Yabos and Shiro refused to even launch. Um, or rather, refused to do anything with a file whatsoever. Um, but when it came to... Um, uh, to uh, uh, to Beetle, it would launch a little bit, and then it would crash. Um, that is to say, it wouldn't even get to the actual proper main menu. Now, what do we do about that situation? Well, what we want to do is not use any of them, because I, I tried it through Emudeck, I tried it through Emulation Station, I tried the standalone versions, you know, through different, like, bits here and there, but none of it seemed to want to work properly. Um, it, none of them seemed to want to work, even when they properly identified that they had the BIOS in place, they just simply would not cooperate. So, that all being said, let's move on to the next step here. So, how do we, uh, how do we actually, uh, get it to run? Well, uh, there's another one, a fifth option called Menefin. Now, if you get a, if you get the standalone version, uh, you can just uh, go ahead and run that through uh, uh, through Emulation Station, and you're all good to go. Um, it'll, from what I understand, supposedly it sets up your controls for you, but I personally have not tested that one yet. Um, either way, we'll uh, we'll cover that in just a sec. Um, but there's going to be a, a few extra steps running through Menefin. Um, as far as actually launching the game, it should be able to launch it right away as soon as you have the BIOS files where they're supposed to go. But then as soon as you go to launch it, it's a little bit more of a story. You see, your sound isn't going to work. Um, initially, uh, it does not accept the uh, kind of default sound drivers there. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go uh, uh, go into the config file. Uh, you want to control F, go to sound.device, and it will be set to default. So I promise you I'm not mess uh, not uh, making this next part up because it for some reason it's just how it it's the command that it wants. Okay, you take default, you replace it with sex y'all dash literal dash default. I don't know what this stands for. Um, I don't think I necessarily want to Google what it stands for, but yes, uh, I'll put the uh, the exact spelling in the um, uh, in the description, uh, the video description that is. Uh, just yeah, it, uh, for some reason that makes the sound work. As you can tell, it works just fine. Uh, the sound effects are actually much nicer in the um, uh, in the Saturn versions, or I say versions and version. That is to say, most of the sound effects are nicer. Like, the the unit dying sounds are a lot more natural sounding. A lot of the overall movements are a lot nicer. Like, I like the bow sounds. Um, just, they're less punchy, but a lot more pleasant to listen to, I would say, than uh, probably the, uh, the other two versions. Um, however, that being said, there are some funky things. Like, for example, instead of having a ding sound, like the kind of characteristic uh, ding that you always get from blocking something throughout this whole series, like the whole, you know, they whip out a shield and it's just like, Ding! kind of thing. Instead, they, it's just a sound of them drawing the thing and then a doo-doo-doo kind of miss sound afterwards. I'm not sure why that is. Not really a fan of that part. But either way, you know, visually it looks uh, uh, looks a lot more vibrant. And I feel, I feel like the actual uh, colorization of all of this stuff might be what they were drawing inspiration from for uh, Reborn. Originally, I thought it was Night of Lotus, but like... The uh, the kinds of uh, kind of more vibrant coloring that they've used in certain areas definitely feels like how uh, Reborn did it too. All right. Anyway, so after you've gotten the sound uh, working uh, for your uh, deck setup here, uh, you unfortunately will now have another issue in which you'll try to go and use your controls and they will not work. They're not set by default. Um, so instead, uh, we're um, we're gonna have to get those set up. There's a command to get them set up, because you cannot set them up through the settings. You have to put in the command, and it'll ask you to put it in while the game is running. Okay, another unfortunate complication. I'm sorry, we'll stop backpedaling in a moment, but you want to go to uh, to Steam, uh, you want to go to your controller settings, and enable generic inputs. For some reason, um, a lot of the buttons will not properly kind of identify to the, uh, to the emulator if you don't do this. Um, Specifically, when I tried to use the uh, the trackpad and uh, analog sticks for inputs, it wouldn't accept them. So, you, anyway, so after after enabling that and then restarting the emulator, um, then it allowed for uh, for rebinding things properly. It still would not accept certain inputs. Uh, like for example, it would like if you tried to put in L1 and R1, those work fine. If you tried to put uh, L2 and R2. 
uh, they would act very sensitively. Um, that is to say, like, it would just accept ghost input sometimes. I don't know why. Uh, using uh, uh, L3 and R3 worked fine, but using L4 and L5 would not, it just would not accept those inputs. I don't know why. I have absolutely no theories as to why. It just wouldn't take them. Um, and then uh, uh, the uh, the L4 and L... Or wait, did I say... Yeah, it's supposed to be L4, R4, sorry. And then L5 and R5, uh, those ones work properly. Sometimes. Sometimes it just wouldn't. But anyway, that's besides the point. Personally, if you're running on a Steam Deck, the, the configuration that I found the easiest, which I'll go ahead and kind of set here just to show you, um, is like if you've done all this other stuff, you, uh, you ha you're in your emulator here, you uh, hold Alt, Shift, and press 1, and it'll take you to this right here. So then from here, you uh, put your commands in. It may be a little slow to reply at first. It won't take kind of ginger inputs, so, you know, really mash that button in there. Um, uh, once you're actually playing, it'll feel a lot more normal, but it really wants you to, uh, to shove your thumb in there for those inputs. I don't know why. But I personally found it coziest uh, to put start uh, over on L3. Um, so we're going to pop that in there. For A, it stays as A. Uh, for B, it stays as B. Uh, for C, I like to just tapping on the trackpad. Uh, for X, um, we can just uh, go ahead and put that up here on R3 uh, for reasons that'll be clearer later. So we're just going to go ahead and tap that one in there. Uh, y can go ahead and stay as Y, and then Z can be on X. So the reason for this is because it's fairly similar to the uh, PS1 setup, uh, if you're familiar with it. Uh, hopefully I'm remembering all of these buttons right, but that uh, should be about right. Oh, shoot. I'm still mashing buttons before doing anything, but yeah, you, you then finish putting it in your settings, and then you have it like that. If you mess something up, just hit the command in again, you, it'll ask you to pop the buttons in again. But then yeah, you're all good to go. Um, I know I made it sound dramatic and complicated and whatever else, but on a base level, this is all fairly similar to pretty much any other emulation setup. Um, it's very cozy to run once you get going. I like personally, I haven't felt any uh, any slowdown or excessive warmth or whatever else on this thing, so that's a relief. Um, honestly, uh, some of the emulation stories that I've heard always had me a little bit worried as far as what it would potentially do to the Thinky Brick. I know, I know, it's unreasonable to worry that something that's going to be able to run Elden Ring will have an issue emulating a Saturn, but look, these things are weird. Saturn emulation is. It's just always been one of those funky things. For some reason, it cooked my old laptop. So, <laughs> just we're, we're just going to go and leave that as that. So, anyway, overall, how good is this version? Well, I mean, I, I would say I've been very pleasantly surprised by it. Um, I like, like I said, usually I always recommend the, uh, the PS1 version just because it allows you to have more saves. Like, for example, in the PS1 version, they just basically said, hey, if you can fit it on your memory card, we don't care. Um, in this version, they did the SNES thing, and you're still limited to your three slots, um, which is a bit of a bummer on a game that you want to play over and over and over. So, you know, it always bugs me to uh, to need to go make uh, additional save slots by just making a different version of the ROM or something. Um, in terms of installing the English patch, which we should probably get to because, you know, this was kind of originally about the English uh, patch, it's very simple. I mean, the README is very, very simple. You just launch the thing, and then you just apply it to your multi-track uh, file here, and you're all good to go. Like, that's it. That's all you gotta do. Um, it's definitely one of the easier uh, translation patches I've seen. You don't really need any outside stuff to do it. Um, just pop it in there, it'll get it done, and uh, you're all set from there. Oh, oh, dang it. I just remembered. There's one detail I forgot earlier. Uh, I apologize if somebody's gotten to this part and they're frustrated because they're missing a piece. If you had gotten Mendefin launched and you're wondering why the game hasn't started yet, if, why it's not launching for you, for reasons that I completely don't understand, uh, you have to launch it from the queue instead of the bin. Um, for anyone unfamiliar, basically for multi-track files, it's going to dump them out in a series of different tracks to just kind of have it jump between. Um, and in the case of this one, yeah, normally you would run just launch the bin and it'll work just fine. You would usually just launch the first track. In this case, you do have to run the queue instead. It, I believe even in the um, uh, even in the translation notes, it mentions to launch it from the bin. You launch it from the queue uh, in this particular situation. Uh, for Beetle and stuff like that, you would probably still launch it from the uh, the bin on regular PC, but on Steam Deck, do the queue thing. 
Very oddly specific, I know, but such is the life with emulation sometimes, especially for kind of niche consoles. Any darn ways. So that'll be that. Uh, go ahead and have some fun with this thing. Uh, this, uh, this translation seems to have done a fantastic job. It's really fun seeing the PSV translation uh, going on the old classics here. Um, and yeah, it's... Uh, it's a great thing. It's definitely a lot less stuttery than the other versions, and I'm curious to see what other uh, interesting item placements might have potentially changed. Because, again, I don't think I've ever found a like heel scroll standing right behind uh, uh, Hamilton at the intro. I'm positive that's... I'm, I'm positive that has to be a new thing. That's always been a men leaf. Again, maybe I've missed something incredibly obvious this whole time, but, like, I'm, I'm fairly well positive that it's there. But, all right. Y'all have a good one. Take care. Hopefully this was handy. I'm sorry this took so dang long to uh, get out to you. It's been like a, just a week of absolute unmitigated chaos on top of the fact that Saturn emulation is just weird sometimes, especially on a operating system that I'm relearning right now. So thank you for your patience. Um, and yeah, to the like 40 people that keep commenting, where's the, uh, the thing on the English translation? I'm sorry. Also, wait a minute. I think the Saturn version might have more forgiving vertical tolerance on bows, I just noticed. Like, a couple of times I've noticed that it seemed to be firing higher, but, uh... That definitely seems a lot higher than I would have expected from this version. I don't know, maybe somebody can clarify in the comments. Again, I'm I'm just learning this particular version because it's always been too much of a pain in the neck to, uh... To kind of get operating before. Alright, y'all have a good one, take care, uh, and I will see you in the next one.